Welcome everybody to my uh, presentation on behalf of the HAW Hamburg, our research team, striving to make an impact in the times of the pandemic. And before I begin, I'd like to uh, thank everybody and uh, acknowledge everybody who made this wonderful project possible and who contributed um, internationally and locally to this uh, chief project, which uh, I found was a great adventure. So welcome to my talk. I'd like to begin um, to summarize the, our findings in regard with the concepts of culture, identity and cultural heritage, what we found in our empirical study. Well, we found a prevailing narrow and one dimensional understanding of culture, identity and heritage, which is often limited to a dominant white and Eurocentric perspective in which Europe and in particular Germany alone are considered developed and culturally superior. So we can see that a certain cultural hierarchy is established here. And that leads to a situation where culture is used to justify exclusion, racism, and other forms of discrimination. This uh, can be found in different understandings of culture, whether we look at culture as a form of artistic production and consumption. There we see this uh, high culture and mass culture. We see the hierarchy here. Whether we look at cul understandings of culture along um, defined along the lines of ethnicity, nation or religion, however those are conceptualized. And here the hierarchy is also established via uh, this division between the normative white German culture, uh, which is put um, as an opposite to a culture to the cultures of the so-called others. But also uh, in the, the so important in the German context, culture of remembrance operates within the same paradigm of cultural hierarchy. On the one hand, the German colonial past is relativized, often romanticized and even glorified. Uh, and at the same time, the colonial crimes are forgotten. And moreover, the impact of the colonial past on today um, is uh, completely overlooked, is not talked about. And at the same time, there is this kind of demonstrative commemoration of the Nazi past with which Germany prides itself greatly, uh, but it is used to construct a kind of guilt-free German identity. So it is used to wash the guilt uh, from the Germans, which is strange anyway, because guilt is not something we can talk about when we uh, look at people who are two, three, four generations removed from those who are guilty. But at the same time, the individual familial reference to the Nazi history uh, is made a taboo, is not talked about. And so there is a problematic relationship that we find between the understanding of culture and racisms in plural, and we mean all kind of um, all kind of discrimination against racialized people. And so the related activities to these findings, the related activities of our multi uh, multiple st uh, stakeholder partnerships, um, whereas they were defined in the, our meeting in January 2020, would be uh, directed towards mostly towards schools and um, Two mini projects were defined. One was a lecture series held at our university, at our university that uh, tackled the issues of institutional racism in education and social work. And the other should be a youth empowerment conference that uh, would aim at pupils from Hamburg schools and should tackle racism, racisms in plural and other forms of discrimination. 
Well, and then it came, the global pandemic. Well, the global pandemic and everything that happened during that time until now made our work um, even more urgent, uh, sometimes more feasible, but also ways more difficult. In terms of urgency, um, we can see that pandemic is um, further paralyzing, polarizing the society and societies across the world, I guess. And uh, it leads, among others, to exclusionist discourses and also violence, that they are increasing their outreach which is usually driven by fear. So we have all kinds of conspiracy theories. There are scapegoats. Uh, there are groups that found that are considered guilty of the pandemic, all kind of uh, marginalized groups, etc. Um, this exclusionist discourses and violence are also receiving increased uh, media attention. And so um, the mainstream discourses as a result, are shifting to the right. While all what I said in the previous slide um, makes the situation even more urgent uh, for our work in developing or facilitating a more inclusive understandings of culture, identity and heritage, uh, we also found that during the time there's the feasibility that also increased. And this is, uh, has mainly to do with uh, the murder of George Floyd and uh, the rising of the Black Lives Matter movement uh, globally and the solidarity of um, other marginalized or uh, racialized or discriminated groups with the BLM movement, but also the solidarity of uh, privileged groups with the movement. There is, uh, as a result, an awareness, uh, increasing awareness of racism, sexism, and some other forms of discrimination that uh, we have uh, been observing within mainstream media and mainstream discourses. So this kind of opens the door for um, our ideas, our aims um, to um, to the impact or to be able to, to change something or to move something, to shift something. But most of all, the global pandemic made our work um, much more difficult because cultural activities in every understanding and conception of culture were mostly frozen. Um, so we had to shift the lecture series online um, they were pre-recorded and at least they could be held, we could keep that, which was really difficult in the beginning of pandemic because all this um, digital infrastructure was not really in place, but we managed. Uh, but the Youth Empowerment Conference had to be cancelled due to school closures and lockdowns. And so instead, we tried to look for other projects that um, could be held during the pandemic. And so we found this project called Resistance Again and Again by Formation Now and Lukulule, who were our partners in MSP. And you can see Chief Logo here as the main sponsor of the project. Um, Immer wieder Widerstand, Resistance Again and Again, is a young artist, is a project by young artists, is an art project, and you can see the young people pictured here. It is curate, was cre curated by the sisters Naomi Kilechi and Tamika Leo Diambo, and uh, Joan Funa was the artistic director and Mabel Pritch from Lukulule, the project lead. The project is a collective contribution of Afro-diasporic voices to the exhibition, Hey Hamburg, do you know Duala Manga Bell at the Museum of Cultures and Arts of the World in Hamburg. Um, the Museum of Cultures and Arts was renamed just a few years ago before it was called Museum für Völkerkunde, a museum of um, anthropology, but Völkerkunde 
is a term, is a very colonial and Nazi term. Uh, so the museum was renamed and um, they also working on um, changing the way they exhibit their exponents, their artifacts. So the, the, this uh, particular exhibition was about a forgotten history, in Germany forgotten, not in Cameroon, about a Cameroonian king, uh, Rudolf Duala Mangabel, during the German colonial time, who was uh, hanged by German colonial authorities because of resisting um, resisting discrimination and violence against Duala people. So this history is exhibited at the museum, but at the same time, they also exhibit um, artifacts and objects from what they call their Com Com Cameroonian collection, artifacts that um, came to the museum during colonial time or were obtained during colonial time. And we can imagine uh, knowing what happened, what bar barbaric violence happened during colonialism, that these objects were obtained in illegal and uh, violent way, but they're still exhibited alongside um, the history of uh, resistance and death of uh, Duala Mangabel. And so the concept of uh, resistance again and again is to be understood as a political act to reveal existing racist structures in institutions of arts, in museums that are based on colonialism. And um, young artists, they address the origins of the museum's Cameroonian collection, the so-called, but also the relevance of the exhibition and uh, the address topics to their own biographies. And uh, this post-colonial learning took place um, as a seven, in the form of seven workshops in summer 2020 during the pandemic, but in the time where numbers were low and there was a possibility um, of uh, people to meet and held workshops in, uh, under certain concepts and restrictions, uh, few people socially distancing, open windows, etc. And they were led by artists, historians and black community activists. And following this joint learning process, these young artists developed their own artistic contribution to the And now I'd like to show you um, parts of a video clip produced by the museum and to show you the parts where the young artists and the community leader that was a part of our MSP speak up. Why us? Because we people of African descent have an obligation, have a responsibility to see that there is a transformation. I personally set me with the colonial Geschichte auseinander, weil ich viel zu lange blind durch Hamburg gelaufen bin und es einfach wichtig ist, wissen, was für barbarische Dinge weiße Menschen uns angetan haben. Für mich ist es kein Wir, für mich ist es ein Ihr. Und Geschichtsunterricht ist nicht nur das, was in den Büchern steht. Das heißt, guck einfach mal, was es sonst auf der Welt gibt. Es ist nicht nur Europa auf der Karte. Why now? Because now is the time. We can't keep on waiting. And we have to think of the future generations. Pass something on to them. Dadurch, dass überall über Dekolonialisierung gesprochen wird, finde ich, dass es auch genau jetzt Zeit ist, ähm, noch mal zurück in die Geschichte zu gehen, zu gucken, was passiert ist, um voranzugehen. Weil es Dinge sind, die leider immer noch passieren. Korruption ist keine Sache, die von heute auf morgen aufgeklärt oder aufgelöst werden kann. Aber einfach die Wurzel dessen zu verstehen, ist, ist, man sollte sich genau hier in Deutschland damit auseinandersetzen, weil auch genau hier alles begonnen hat. Ähm, wenn euch die Afrika-Konferenz nichts sagt, dann googelt es einfach. Hamburg ist für mich ein wichtiger Ort, sich damit auseinanderzusetzen, da Hamburg eine sehr, sehr reiche Stadt ist und äh, mir einfach selbstbewusst wurde mit der Geschichte von Rudolf Mangabel, dass dieser Reichtum auch größtenteils durch Ausbeutung ermöglicht wurde. It's so important that we are here to claim this space and make it our very own. I myself had a chance to visit the exhibition in the last week of July. 
After two long lockdowns, the museum was finally able to open. Um, even though the exhibition was originally scheduled to, for fall 2020, it was only in summer 2022. And I was invited among other sponsors uh, for a private guided tour. Um, it was a small group with masks and distancing and all. And I took some pictures with my old mobile phone. As you can see, um, the quality isn't great. The artists who were present and also presented their work gave me the permission to do so. I want to show you two examples of this accompanying exhibition by Imma Vida Widerstand. Um, this work by Laurel Chocuago is called A Seat at the Table Struck Through or Crossed Out, as you can see. It is an installation made of plastic and printing ink. Laurel addresses here what it means for black people not to get a seat at the table where positions are negotiated and decisions are made. The second work is Acrylic on Canvas by Noko and it is called F the Colonial Gaze. I give you a moment to observe the painting before I translate the WhatsApp message. It says, Africa exhibition was fantastic. Such masks would fit nicely in our living room. Here, Noko addresses how the colonial-based scholarship transforms ancestral heritage, for instance, masks that uh, were also exhibited by the museum in the main exhibition, transforms this heritage into collectibles and degrades them to uh, so-called exotic souvenirs and decoration. Um, and the artist is also concerned with the colonial gaze of today, the post-colonial gaze, so to say, with expectations that exist towards work of black artists. So what I was trying to show you is uh, truly heritage in the making. We were overly happy with this new mini project and also amazed at how these young people um, intervened in a museum, which is traditionally a white colonial space, a space of cultural heritage, in order to openly and critically question the exhibition and appropriating and remaking heritage in such a creative, empowering and educative way. We also thought of a way to receive a contribution from these young artists to our MSP policy brief that was focused on racist discrimination in schools. Since, as you remember, due to school closures, we did not have access to students, we approached our mini project participants who were just recently out of school. A workshop on this topic was conceptualized by the chief research team together with uh, Shiba Wiafe and Farina Finke, and it used biographical methods to reflect uh, on recent school experiences uh, by these young black people, um, and based on that reflections to develop a list of demands and dis for decision makers. And here um, are three main demands by young people from Emma Vida Widerstand project. So it is about structural inclusion of intersectionally discriminated groups in every aspect of the ed educational institutions, highlighting of their perspectives in regard with the institutional development. Uh, they demand more and mandatory education on topics of discrimination in educational institutions and uh, more research on different forms of racism and antisemitism their mechanisms and possible ways to deconstruct them in the field of social work, social sciences and cultural studies. So despite all odds, our mini project was an absolute success, we would say, and the input of young people contributed greatly to the policy brief. Nevertheless, uh, when we reflect on the whole MSP process, uh, there are several critical questions that we would like to put out for discussion here. So here are the questions and thank you.